In this video, we're going to focus mainly on the general form of an equation of a circle. But just to get things started, I want to kind of review standard form and give you a different type of problem that you might see involving standard form. Sometimes they may give you the center coordinates, and they may say that the circle passes through a given point. And then your job is to either state the equation of the circle or find the radius of the circle. And in either case, you're going to use standard form to get there. Remember that the center coordinates are your h and your k. And any time you have coordinates of a point of a certain graph, those are always going to be your x and your y values. So if we remember the standard form equation of our circle, it looks like this. It always equals r squared. Well, all we have to do is substitute everything that we know and solve for what we don't know. So our x value is 4, and our h value is 1, so 4 minus 1 squared. Then our y value is 6, our k value is 2, square that, and it equals r squared. So as you can see, we're missing the radius value. Well, we can solve for it by simplifying here. So 4 minus 1 is 3, we'll square that. 6 minus 2 is 4, we'll square that. And that's going to give us whatever the radius is squared. 3 squared is 9. 4 squared, oops, skipping ahead. 4 squared is 16. And that's going to give us r squared. So 9 plus 16 is 25. Well, 25 is the radius squared. In order to just get the radius, we need to square root both sides. And we finally see that our radius is 5. So if your job was to solve for the radius, you would now know where the center of the circle was and the radius, and you could possibly graph that even if you needed to. If the question was asking you to state the equation of the circle, given any point, then what you would do is you would keep x and y as variables or as letters, because you want them to stand for any point on the circle. And you would use your center coordinates and your radius value to write the equation of the circle in standard form. So we'd write x minus h, which is 1. We'll square that. We have y minus 2, and that equals r squared. So again, we go back up to what our r squared was. It was 25. And there is the equation of our circle for any point on that circle. All we would have to do is plug in x and y to find a given point. All right, so there's a little review of standard form. Uh, now we're going to jump to what general form is. And general form can be kind of intimidating at first. The more you work with it, the less scary it gets. General form looks like this. x squared plus y squared plus dx plus ey plus f and it's always going to be equal to zero. We never want numbers on the right side. Um, we always want it equal to zero. And don't be scared by all these letters. The D is just going to be a number, the coefficient of X. E is going to be the coefficient of Y. And F is just going to be a number with no variable attached to it, just a constant. And in the general form, you're always going to go in order of powers. And it's going to be alphabetical. So that's why you have X squared and Y squared first. Then you have a number with x to the first power, a number with y to the first power, and then another number without any variable attached to it. Um, so in order to get there, I'm going to show you how we can move from standard form to general form so that you can actually see a real example here. So if we have x minus 2 squared plus y plus 4 squared equal to 9. There's an equation of a circle in standard form. We know that the center is, can you find it? The center is always going to be this number 2 um, with this number, and it's always going to be the opposite of what it looks like. So even though this looks like negative 2, it was positive 2 in the um, coordinate pair. This looks like a positive 4, but in the coordinate pair or center coordinates, it's going to be the opposite, so negative 4. And r squared is 9, so that means that our radius is going to be the square root of that, which is 3. 
But let's move away from this form and write the same equation, or an equation of the same circle, but in a different form. It's going to be in general form now. In order to do that, you need to expand these binomial squared. Remember that squaring something means to multiply it by itself. So I have x minus 2 times itself, x minus 2 times x minus 2. In order to simplify that, you need to FOIL or distribute. So x times x is x squared. x times negative 2 is negative 2x. Negative 2 times x is negative 2x. And negative 2 times negative 2 is a positive 4. Um, last step is to combine your like terms here in the middle. And we finally get x squared. Made a little mistake. x squared minus minus 4x plus 4. And a trick that you might um, start to get more comfortable with is um, jumping straight from here over to here. And in order to do that, all we have to do is double whatever this number is attached to the variable. So if it's a negative 2 with an x and we double it, we get negative 4x. This number or term is always going to be whatever this number is squared. So negative 2 squared is going to be positive 4. Hopefully you get more comfortable with doing that, and that will help you solve these problems a little faster. Let's try it when we expand the y plus 4 squared here. So we've got y plus 4 times y plus 4. We still have that 9 out there on the other side. So we square the, the variable y squared. We're going to double this number with the letter attached to it. So 4y doubled, or times 2, is 8y. And then we square this last number. So we get a positive 16. And that's equal to 9. The last couple of steps here are just combining like terms and moving everything over to the left side of the equation. So I'm going to combine this positive 4 Let's just rewrite this all on one line here, just so we're not skipping any steps. I want to combine my positive 4 with my positive 16. So I get x squared minus 4x plus y squared plus 8y. 4 plus 16 is now 20, and it's equal to 9. I don't want any numbers on my right side. I want it equal to 0. In order to get rid of that 9, I need to subtract 9 from both sides. And so I get x squared minus 4x plus y squared plus 8y plus 11 now. And now it's equal to 0. And the last thing is to rearrange or organize things in order of powers alphabetically. So I got my x squared plus my y squared. I have my negative 4x plus my 8y. And I have my plus 11 equal to 0. Here is the equation of the same circle, but now it's in general form. And oftentimes general form is not very helpful, um, but you will see it given to you in general form, and oftentimes the question will be state either the center or the center and the radius, given the equation in general form, or rewrite the equation in uh, standard form, given it in general form, and mostly it's just an exercise in algebra concepts. So we're going to do that. We're going to start this time with general form, and we're going to try and work backwards to find the center and the radius, see if we can get the same answer we started with. So I'm going to rewrite that equation here. x squared plus y squared, uh, which was it, minus 4x plus 8y plus 11, and it was equal to 0. So this is what you'll usually see in your math book. Given the equation of the circle in general form, state the center, state the radius, and rewrite the equation in standard form. Really, we have to put it into standard form in order to find the center and the radius. So basically, we've got to work backwards here. We're going to subtract 11 from both sides. So now we have x squared plus y squared minus 4x plus 8y equals negative 11. Now I want you to rearrange things 
so that you get your X's and your Y's together. And I'm going to do this little trick here called completing the square in order to get us back to that uh, square of a binomial form. So I'm going to leave a blank here. We're going to come up with a number that fits in there that helps us complete that square. Same thing here, y squared plus 8y and leave a blank for yourself to come up with that number that goes there. Let's start over here on the left. I need a number here that will allow me to factor this polynomial into a square of a binomial. And the trick is always going to be half of this number squared. Well, half of negative 4 is negative 2, and if I square it, I get a positive 4. Well, we just uh, came up with positive 4 out of thin air. We, um, we added that to our equation, and it, it was never there to begin with. Anytime you just put a number in an equation that it didn't start with, you have to make sure and balance your equations. That's an algebra concept. So if I add 4 here, I need to make sure that I add 4 to the right side of my equation in order to keep things balanced. I can't just add 4 to the left side of the equation because then that would make me out of balance. All right, Then we can take this polynomial here, or this quadratic form, and rewrite it as a square binomials. In order to do that, the trick is always to take the square root of whatever letter or variable you're working with. Well, the square root of x squared is just x. That's going to be the first thing in there in each of your parentheses. And then the last thing that goes here is always the square root of that last term. Square root of 4 is 2. And I'm always going to keep the sign that came from the middle. So I know I need x minus 2 in there. I can then rewrite that. Since I have something multiplied by itself, I can rewrite it as a square. Let's try the same thing over here with our y's. I want to take half of the middle term and square it. So half of 8 is 4 square it, I get positive 16. And now I just came up with 16 out of thin air, so if I added 16 to this side of the equation, I gotta add 16 to this side just to keep things balanced. I can now rewrite this as a square of two terms, or a square of two binomials. I'm gonna take the square root of y squared, put y in each of my parentheses, and then I'm going to take the square root of the last term here. So the square root of 16 is 4. And I'm always going to use my, my middle sign, so I'm going to use positives there. You can always check yourself. If you FOIL this out, you should get back to what this is. If not, you need to check your work. So then we can rewrite that as a square. It's y plus 4 times itself, or y plus 4 squared. And simplify your right side. We got 4 plus 16 is 20. And if I combine that with a negative 11, I get 9. Well, here is the equation of our circle in standard form. And I can state the center. And I can state the radius. The center is going to be this number right here. That's our h value, 2. And the opposite of what it looks like is going to be a negative 4 for k. So the center of my circle is at the coordinate 2, negative 4. And my radius is going to be the square root of this, because this is r squared, so I want the square root to find my radius. So the square root of 9 is 3. And there I've just answered the question regardless of what it was, whether it was stating it in standard form, stating the center, or stating the radius. Um, so good luck uh, working with general form and standard form. Standard form is always going to give you the center of your circle and your radius, which would allow you to graph it or find out any other information. Um, <clears throat> important that you remember that when you're completing your square and you're coming up with numbers out of thin air, in order to rewrite them as squares of binomials, don't forget that you have to add them to the right side of your equation. Otherwise, it might not work out the way you want it to. So good luck using general form, standard form, and graphing circles.